glorify and magnify your incredible, phenomenal, mind-blowing name. But not in our speech, not in the way we say it, because we're so used to thinking, oh, that's where the power is, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yahweh. No, we're stepping in, Father. We want to have the understanding, switch our brain capacity to understand this differently. We're not saying a name. We are in a dimensional realm where your being is, and we are in it. And that is your name. It's in the yard, in the hay, in the vav, in the hay, in the frame of the fullness of all of who you are. And we enter in as the shin. We don't enter in as, as man. We enter in as the shin. In the fullness of Christ is no longer I who live, but Christ that is in me. I enter in as the shin, the transformated one. The one who is new and fresh. The one that is set in the fullness of the DNA of his father. The one who comes in to be changed, renewed, refreshed, enhanced, propelled, shift. Father, we come into that name tonight, today. And I ask you to open our ears, open our eyes, open our way of thinking and understanding. Shift us, align us, propel us. Let's begin to understand things in a, in a different way. Let's understand things in a different way. Let's have a different knowledge, a deeper place of knowledge in all of who you are, understanding that knowledge and walking in the fullness of the wisdom that comes with the knowledge and the understanding you pour into us, Father. We love you, we praise you as your people, as your sons and your daughters. We are gathering in your name to be educated, trained, equipped and sent. Father, we come to this place on a Sunday to receive from you, to be educated, to bring all of who we are into one body, to ignite like fusion explains, it is the coming together of two energetic objects with a result of explosive power. We're coming in together as sons and daughters as the body to unite and, and ignite into the fullness of who Christ is, to be pro propelled back into creation with the authority and the power that's needed to align all things back into the blueprints for the day. So Father, we're excited for this morning. We love you, we praise you. You're an incredible, phenomenal, mind-blowing God. We thank you, Yahweh. Amen. Amen. So while I'm praying, money is appearing in front of me. I like that. I'm just going to keep praying. Um, so I'm going to try and do something today. I always say that. Before I do anything, y'all, I want to pray for somebody. I don't want to give too much detail out there. We don't have any detail, really, very small portions. He texted me a couple of weeks ago, asked me to pray. I was reminded by Tommy again just now to pray. So I just want to bring uh, Chris Carter. You know, we love him, we honor him. He's powerful, beautiful, incredible, great father um, to his kids, an incredible husband to his wife. He's an incredible teacher to us and even to his students. You know, we love him, we, we honor him, he's powerful, he's beautiful. And um, I believe that he's going through something uh, medically that is uh, giving him a little bit more than what he needs right now. So Father, we want to come as a body of people and extend who we are in the frequency of love to reveal and to release the power of who we are as sons in you, what you have originally intended for us to be as we connect with all of who you are, Father. We enhance who you have made us to be and we breathe your breath of life, your fullness, your glory, your fire into Christ right now. And we speak to his body and command it to be healed in the name of Yeshua. That every attribute, every aspect that has stepped out of place, we bring it back, we prod it like a shepherd with a sheep to come back into the flock. Not that anything is out of place, but the body is not in line. So we're bringing it back right now, Father, as we, in the name of Yeshua, breathe healing into him. We thank you that as the accusations come against his life, and we, as the priests of God, and the ones that love and, and, and exude your glory into creation, can come together and stand for our brother, and say that the accusations made is nullified and void. It is no longer standing, it no longer has right. And Father, we come for the judgment and we thank you that your judgment over Chris's body and his life is to be healed, to be propelled and to be excelled, Lord. So we breathe that into position, we breathe that into place and we worship and praise you in advance for the victory that we see, Father. 
It is incredible to know that when a son lines with his father, anything and everything he touches is healed and set free and propelled and enhanced and shifted back into alignment and place. For I ask that you will open our hearts to overshadow, to expand, and to have those we love and care for in our hearts. With only what you have in your heart, you can change. So Father, we have Chris in our hearts. We love him and honor him as we are one with him. And we bring that into his being and the frequency of your glory and your fire and your love in him and over him to bring complete and utter healing. And we thank you in advance for the miracle, Father. Amen. Amen. Therefore, I also hearing of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love to all the saints. Do not cease giving thanks for you. This is Paul speaking in Ephesians, if you're wondering. I don't mention where it is in the Bible on purpose. I don't tell you what scripture it is on purpose because I'm not a, a, a mommy trying to feed my babies a little bit of porridge with a spoon. Okay? If, it's, if I'm reading it, and uh, I'm telling you it's in, my bar, in your Bible, and it's not in the Bible, may lightning hit me. Okay? And if you're sitting there, and I'm telling you that this is in the Bible, and I'm reading it, and you're thinking, it's not. He's lying. May lightning hit you. And, and by the way, when it does, actually, apparently, a really good thing. I'm just joking. Therefore, I also, hearing of the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ to all the saints, do not cease giving thanks to you, making mention of you in my prayers. This is Paul praying for the body of Christ. And I want you to have this in your heart. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Okay, so He is already asking you to engage with the seven spirits, saying that there's a dimension of power and authority that comes with wisdom, knowledge, understanding, because when you combine the three, if you understand the Hebrew, three is the establishment of governance. So that's just three of the four spirits. We understand the spirit of the Lord is not Holy Spirit, but it is that dimension of the seven spirits that holds everything together. It's the middle of the menorah. We have to understand when the one side of the menorah is a male species and the other side of the menorah is a female species and the one in the middle is a male species, when we're engaging with, with female species in the spirit, it is always connected. I don't know why. Help me, Jesus. Now, don't stone the ladies. Don't look at me with that tone. But wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, we have to come into a place where we realize that these three together establishes a dimension within our faith that opens up a doorway, a gateway to receive everything that Yahweh has for you from the very beginning. And so it comes with the understanding of the power and the authority. That's why I always bring this across because the seven spirits are so extremely important. And they always bring you to the knowledge of Him. Well, I remind you because we have the bench of three, we have the bench of seven, we have the bench of ten. That is at the throne of Yahweh. The bench of three is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then you have the bench of seven, which is the seven spirits. Then you have the bench of ten, which is the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and the seven spirits combined. They are the governance of creation. Now, I exclude myself because I am in Him. And I exclude myself because I'm in Him. I mean, if you know and remind yourself that He has created a space for you in Him. Yes. You don't create a space for, a separate from Him. The space that He created for you is in Him. All right. It's always in Him. If you're out of Him, oops, you're all going to have a problem. <laughs> you guys okay? Yes. In the eyes of your understanding of being enlightened, It is, it's about your soul. I do not need to engage the seven spirits with my spirit. As a matter of fact, the seven spirits wants to engage my spirit. No, no, look at me with that tone. I am the only living species created in His image and likeness. Every other created being is running into it, wanting it. Uh, sitting at it, being in awe of who we are, but we have never tapped into it. And I say this very lightly. We are probably the only species in creation that after 9,200, 9, 9, 9, I don't know how many billion messages on who you are in Christ, we still have no clue who we are in Christ. That's it. That's it. 
That's the problem, right? And the only one who has a clue who we are in Christ is Christ. And we worship Him and glorify and magnify Him. But I've, I've said this so many times. The church has broken Him down into a religion, yeah. placed Him into a box. Yeah. And now all we do is we see that uh, the Father and the uh, Holy Spirit must be uh, come together and made a baby. And called Him Jesus. Well, actually, that's not true. Because God, Yahweh, is. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So what we have to understand is God that created creation and everything we can see came into a physical bodily form like mine to set all things back into motion. Um, uh, Damien was just talking about it. If I take any molecular structure out of this metal, it's no longer the same. If I take it out of water, as far as I understand, um, water is the weirdest substance. Because, but if you take one substance out, it's no longer water. It's the same with almost anything and everything, and it's the same with us. If you're born into sin, and I was saying this again, you're not born with sin. You don't come out of your mother's womb, you son of a marvelous goat. You know, it, it, uh, unless your name is Noah. I mean, you understand, Noah came out of his mother's womb praising God. Yeah, he did. Huh, how the hell did he do that? As a matter of fact, uh, he opened his eyes and the light that came out of him lit up the entire room that he was in. So freaky that his dad ran out to his dad and said, <clears throat> I think my wife had sex with one of those uh, giants we were talking about. <laughs> those and he had to tell him, no, that's the generation that ignites the rest of what Yahweh wants to bring into full fruition. So let me also say, when the Bible says, as in the days of Noah, and all you can think of is a bunch of sin, get your damn act together, brother. Because that's not what it's talking about. It has nothing to do with the days of Noah, as we think. And I said this before, I can be the best employee at the company that I worked for, for 20 years, make one mistake. And you're no longer the best employee, and that's the only thing they can remember. So when we think of Noah and the days of Noah, let's not think of the sin. Let's think of that supernatural, incredible dimension and the DNA that was presented to us there that lit up the room. That is a pure lineage of that which comes directly from Eden. That which was distorted through Adam and Eve. I'd rather say, say, Gustav and whoever else because it was it had nothing to do with Adam and Eve because I would have made the same mistake. I would have done the exact same thing. But Yahweh has given us everything we need. Are you guys okay? Yeah. The eyes of our understanding being enlightened that we may know what is the hope of His calling and what is the riches of His glory and inheritance in the saints. And it's not what we have now. I mean, we have to remind ourselves our thinking is this. There's many, many, many religions out there. How many of you know that? Yeah, many. Okay, well, unfortunately, that's what we've been believing all our lives. So at the end of the day, Christianity is just another religion, and you have to give your life to Jesus, and if you don't give your life to Jesus, you're going to go to hell. Okay, well, tell that to Enoch, yeah. and tell that to Elijah, tell that to Jesus himself. Yes. Uh-oh. As a matter of fact, if you ever listen to Nancy Colin, oh, Colin, oh my God, <laughs> Nancy, Colin, oh, oh, sorry, Nancy, um, uh, no, Colin, Colin, she talks about a, a time in, uh, I think it was the Amazon, where she was preaching messages and there was this guy that was annoying the living snot out of her because he just kept on screaming and shouting out of joy. And eventually she, she Yahweh looks and says to her, he says, that man knows me better than you do. And the reason he was shouting is because he found out the God he was worshipping and love on for so many years, his name is Jesus. So I don't want to be rude to you or anything, but if your theology tells you that you have to do the sinner's prayer in church to give your life to Jesus, then maybe you should reconsider your understanding of who Jesus is. Because do I have to give myself to Him? I surrender my being to all of who He is. But it's because I step into Him and I allow Him to frame who He is around me. 
It's not that I now have to, oh, okay, I just gave my life to Jesus. I can't swear anymore. No, I'm, I'm, I'm saying these things with the logic behind it. If I have a little baby, I am training that child in the ways of life from a young age. So they set rules up to a certain point and then I can no longer put those rules into my child. It had to be done when he was younger. Because once you reach a certain point, you want to start feeling life. You want to start experiencing it. Oh, why did you tell me I can't do it? I'm going to go do it and find out why. <laughs> then you get motherlessly drunk and get the, what do you call the hangover the next day and you realize, oh, that's probably one of the reasons why I shouldn't be doing that. But then also in the same breath, you start realizing, well, they always allowed me to take a sip of beer here, take a little drink here, because it's always in the measure. It wasn't you cannot. It was to teach you a moderate a state in all of your days. So a five-year-old should not be saying the F word and should not be swearing. And, and if he does, it's a major problem. You get pepper, you, I don't know, whatever else, I don't know what the Americans do, you get a spanking, you know, um, a normal normal talk, you don't know, spank a child because it's, uh, we're going to detail, you smack his bottom, right? Um, but the idea behind it is, is that you reach a certain point in your life where you've been disciplined and then you start rebelling. How many of you remember those days? How many of you are still in those days? Help us, Jesus. Right? But the idea of rebellion is not as, we look at it as everything is the bad thing. Because we're eating of the wrong tree. Remind yourselves. So rebellion is designed to really to push you into the direction you're supposed to grow in. Because now all of a sudden, I can't drink, but I've been, been conditioned to understand why not to indulge. And of course, I have the Holy Spirit that brings me to a point in my life where I have self-control. The fruits is what enhances me and pushes me, propels me. We have made it a religion and therefore we have a do-do list and what we can and we can't. And it takes from us because I will never be free to do whatever I want to. And if I do what I want to, I'm in rebellion. And now I have a whole congregation of people that love me, but nobody, no, no one cares anymore because now they are speaking against me. Did you hear what sister so-and-so did? Yeah, did right. you hear what brother so-and-so did? Oh, they went to hell. Right? Right. I don't know. I don't know how we can associate with them anymore. You know, so now you have all these negativity and you remind yourself, I am a spirit being. Hence, if I speak and breathe, this breath is not just oxygen. It comes from my spirit. That's why when I speak in tongues, this is a frequency that's released from the kingdom of heaven, which is in me, that's coming out and is changing the atmosphere and aligning me with the heavens. So now I'm a spiritual, born again idiot with the knowledge and the power of God saying the bad things about my brother and my sister because they're doing things that I'm not even supposed to be focused on because I ain't supposed to be eating of that tree that I am because I was taught that what I have is a religion like every other religion in our community. But if I listen to Paul, he makes a very interesting statement. He says, don't eat food that was sacrificed to other gods. And he carries on about, about a bunch of crazy things that I wouldn't care about in any way, fashion, or form. And then he, at the end, says, but, but just remind yourself, there's only one God. So really, the food was not sacrificed to no other God. Because there is no other God. No Christianity. Well, what, what's Christianity? A Muslim. Yeah. You think you're going to die and have 72 versions. First of all, 72 virgins don't know what they're doing. Why would anybody want that? There's a logic to what I'm trying to bring across here. We have looked at it through the eyes of man's made thing. But if I'm in Yeshua, if I step into Him, if I understand that in Him is the knowledge, the revelation, the wisdom, the fullness of the Spirit. He gives me the enlightenment of my understanding. So it's not in darkness anymore. I'm thinking clear. Well, you can't drink, brother. So come here, bring me a beer and I'll show you I can. <laughs> but am I going to get drunk? No. Because I have self-control. And I want myself to be free. I don't want nobody to tell me, you cannot do that. If I do it, I want to be convicted. Not condemned. Now the church brings condemnation and I don't want to be rude or anything. But that's what Satan does. 
Satan condemns you and Holy Spirit convicts you. And conviction is very gentle. Now, if you know the comforter, um, the guy, the teacher, he is the mother. So, I would suggest you don't do it again. It's probably going to end up doing it again. But you know, it's going to be okay. Just calm yourself down. Focus on me. Love on me. Worship me. Glorify me. And when you do it, forgive yourselves. Because I've forgiven you already. Keep doing it for as long as you think it's going to benefit you. But realize that I am as the voice in you telling you that it's not benefiting you. It's not going to bless you. It's not going to increase you. It's going to keep taking from you until you realize that the way you are walking towards this mountain is really not going upwards. You're just going around the same thing. And you're digging your own grave. But there's going to be a time where you want to turn to the left or the right. And you realize if I don't turn to go either up the mountain or come down this mountain, I'm just going to fall down in my own grave. Holy Spirit doesn't push, doesn't, doesn't hunt, doesn't tell you, you horrible, dirty, rotten, filthy sinner, how dare you? Come on. Do you not know my God? Yeah. I, mean, I know men. And let me say this, 90% of the men that preach us on the sin that we are so violently entangled in, is violently entangled in sin themselves. I'm not exempting anybody, because, because sin is just something I have next to me, and every now and then I bump into it. It's not part of me anymore. It's not, it's not what I indulge in. It's not what I make myself and force myself to have. Wow. It's an old habit that <coughs> might bump me back into it. It's something I, I thought of in a wrong way. That's why we live a life of repentance. <coughs> and what is the surpassing greatness of His power towards us? The ones believing according to the working of His mighty strength and which works in Christ in raising him from the dead now this is the power that worked in Christ to raise him from the dead that power is in me that gives me a dimension of authority and understanding of who I am that should shift me out of the natural into the kingdom of heaven where I begin to understand who I am and the frequency that I live in and the, the light and the color spectrum that Yahweh has opened up for me that I'm in his breath that I'm one with him, that I am his high priest, which means I carry his presence. I carry his image. Hello. Far above all principalities and authority and power and dominion and every name that's named. Not only in this world, but also in the world to come, or the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and gave him to, to be head over all things the church yes. okay so where did we get the whole bride thing from because if Yeshua is the head of the church then I have to be the body of the church because if I'm the bride of the church then how's that going I'm married to a head <laughs> and I said this many times we need to get the mind of the bride mindset out of our heads it's never been his intention a bride has no rights she has no inheritance. She's not married yet. You're only a bride for one day. But that bride and that groom on that day has a passion for each other that cannot be expressed or explained other than in this covenant. So when Yahweh talks about us in marriage, He's not talking about us and I want you to be my wife. I want you to be my husband. I want to marry you. No, He marries the land. He wants you to understand that type of covenant because that's the, the, the gate of first love. That's going back into that. <laughs> wow, that baby's gorgeous. I don't you know, want to be away from her for one second. I don't want to be away from him for one second. That's the, the gateway that he wants opened in your life towards him. And, and I said to so many times and I still have not per se to this day found a way to explain it. But the way I'm to love him is the way I love my body. Exciting, isn't it? Yes. Well, let's skip two chapters and go to Ephesians 3. I said it. I said it. Uh oh. Now you know where it is. Be afraid. <laughs> For this cause I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and on earth is named. So everyone's named after him. Why do we not see this? 
It was never a figure for us to worship. It was a figure for me to step into and become. And then go worship. Because he presented himself as a son. Jesus is not a son. He's God. But he presented himself so I can see with these things. And then become that. Because what I behold I will become. I just put myself in the damn eye. And he would grant you according to the riches of his eye. Glory, I always say. To the riches of his eye. To the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by the spirit in the inner man. The inner man is what strengthens you. And you say, well, what about the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit will never leave me nor forsake me. Holy Spirit is what you call sunanti numbanumai. And it's a Greek word, that it means almost a parasite. Oh my God. But it's attached to, it's to the front, to the back, to the sides, to the top, to the bottom. It ain't going nowhere. It's informed me in battle, in battle. It is in, in, engraved itself into me. It's inseparable. And it has never left me. You guys understand what I'm saying? Yes. You believe what I'm saying. That Christ might dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know that love of Christ which passes knowledge, that he might be filled with all the fullness of God. You know, I remember this one time, I'm really praying for this lady, and she's what we would call Hori Kamoli. Going to die, young lady. Type of situation. She was humongous. She was kind of freaking me out. I didn't even know how she stood up. It was just wow. And while I'm prophesying over her, I'm saying, You will know the love of God and the fat will fall off your body. And I go. And a couple of months later, the guy that brought her there starts talking to me over the phone and says, She's just losing weight. Like it's falling off of her body and she doesn't know what is going on. And then she remembered the prophecy that I gave her. Wow. That once you know the love of God, see, when you understand who you are and who loves you and why he loves you, then all these things that we find comfort in no longer minds, no matter matters, no, 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 no longer becomes the life to us. But it's because we don't know him. Now everybody's got their little things. You know, some people eat when they stress. Some people sleep when they stress. Some people beat other people up when they stress. I actually wanted that one. But I do the sleeping thing, I'll be Jesus. <laughs> but actually, I also do the gym thing. Now, yeah, because okay, so I stress a lot. Calm down. <laughs> and to know the love of Christ which passes all knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God, how uh, now to Him is able... To, so now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power of uh, that works in us to him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus through all ages forever. You know, in these two passages of scripture, Yahweh is wanting us to understand the authority and the power that we have, that which we carry, that which we hold in who we are. And the desire that he has for us to run with that in our full capacity. If you look at uh, Joseph, you know, he just stayed on what he believed the father was saying. All these crazy things was happening to this man. I mean, before he knew it, he was in jail. And I mean, all the, that led him there was nothing he did. He did not rape that lady. He didn't hurt her. He didn't take her, tear her God, garment. He did a godly thing. And before you know it, he was in a jail for many, many years. But when he came out, he didn't come out, he was taken out and he got promoted to a place where we can't even begin to fathom. And Yahweh is wanting us to understand when that, that, what's that thing? Molecule is put back in. When everything that Yahweh is, is wanting to put back in us is back in line, then everything just shifts into position. Things start falling into place. Now, now look, it's a process and it's not because oh, I have the knowledge, now I'm going to get it. It's a process of going into what Yahweh has for you. And it's aggressive. Look at me, guys. It's aggressive. This is, this is not a takeaway. You have to work at it. 
And it's the passion that you put in to the work that you put into it that's going to grow you. It's not going to happen because you come to church and listen to a message. It's not going to happen because you have a Bible under your arm. It's not going to happen because you're a Christian. Yeah. So, you know, the rest of the world understands a little bit how to operate in the name. Because if you listen to some of the other religions out there doing things, they don't say in the name. But yet we're seeing, if you open your Facebook page and you go to um, the little market they have, there's little ads. And on one of these ads is a, 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 a it's called Magic Love. And it's exactly to the T what we do in church. They are laying their hands on the people, but it's all about freedom. I'm not saying that it's Christian. It's probably demonic. I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's demonic because I don't want to talk about it like that. But it is the people that have understood that that which you carry, that which is aligned in you, has the capacity to heal. Jesus saying to his disciples, go and heal the sick in my name. And what do we do? We go pray and then say in the name of Jesus. Now because that has grown faith in me, it's given us the results. Not, not much. And I know for a fact of people that have been healed in meetings, testified it, and before they knew it, they had that same disease again. But we have to begin to understand, Yahweh Yeshua was saying, you heal the sick because you're in my name. It's a frequency that comes out of me. I was hugging two of my, my beloved friends and they were saying, when you hug me, it's like fire. But it's a frequency. It's that frequency that is supposed to heal. It's supposed to enhance. It's supposed to propel. The fact that we are in creation, the fact that we are in the world, shouldn't be hospitals. There shouldn't be sickness and disease. Yeah. You know, well, if they come together with the elders so they can pray for the sick. There shouldn't be any sick. And I say that because we need to begin to understand who we are. Yes. Because in this knowledge of what it says in the scriptures, we begin to understand. In Him I have knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. In Him I'm enlightened. In Him there's a position set for me that opens up and puts everything back in me that should be there for me to be excelled and propelled into creation and into all of what Yahweh has for me. Joseph was able to do this because he had a relationship with Yahweh and knew how to operate in the supernatural. It's like Yahweh is calling a company of people to just simply see the beauty, to see the, the fire of what it means to stand in His fullness. You know, if I look at the idea behind the authority and the power that I have in the spirit. Now we're walking towards the fullness of it. We don't have the full understanding. We don't have the full value of really truly what we are because we've been conditioned to believe, well, I have to do it in a certain way. This is how it has to happen. If it happens in any other way, it's not God. But we are beginning to teach it slightly different because the closer you get to Jesus, the closer you get to Yahweh, the deeper you go in His kingdom. When you start engaging, you know, I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but I was sitting in the, in the chair just engaging and worshiping. And I know I do it a little bit different than most people. And then I stopped raising my hands and I stopped singing with and I, 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 I still do it, but, but I find myself, if I just close my eyes or I just sit in a certain position, I keep myself busy in a certain way, just doing something that looks like I'm not paying attention, <laughs> then... Um, it, it kind of opens up something for me. It just, it's a, a different type of focus and a different gate that shifts. And I'm sitting there and I'm doing exactly that as the music's playing. And it talks about the last song, second last song we were listening to was talking about a gate. And as I was listening to this song, this gate in front of me just opened up. But it was almost like it was, it was pressed again so badly that it didn't open up. It was broken open. And all these supernatural, incredible phenomena. I even had a metrodome coming in uh, into the atmosphere. And just looking at all this, these beings, saints of all men of uh, and white linen, just pouring into the atmosphere. And Yahweh saying to me, my son, I want you to be to be reminded of what I said to you about ten years ago. As a matter of fact, about ten years ago, Yahweh started showing me in the spirit a river that was being built by seraphim. So they were coming into creation and they started building a river from one point of creation to another point of creation. And about two months ago, maybe three months ago, maybe six, I said the other day, they, they finished it up and um, immediately there was just an activity in the spirit that looked completely different because now they were 
all these finalized uh, things being done to this uh, river of fire going through creation, it's not seen, it's in the supernatural, so it's really for the suns, and it's from nothing and nobody else, because nothing and nobody else needs it. We are the only species that can come to full restoration in the full image of what Yahweh has for us. And we have to understand that. So when Yahweh God talks about the restoration of all things, it excludes Satan and every demonic entity. But as a decision has already made, we have to understand. And so Yahweh brings me to that point in my life where I begin to realize that holiness and purity being set apart is key for the season that we're in. And holiness has nothing to do with the little do-do's and don'ts that we have in our hearts. It's being holy unto God. It's being separated from this world to Him. Not, not engaging in anything in the world. Not having any fun with your friends and family members. Let me tell you, the reason your friends are not coming to Jesus is because you're never with them. No, oh, I'm not going there. No, you're going to get drunk. You should be there. And if they're drunk around you, at least they're going to be protected by you. You know, I'm in the weirdest atmosphere sometimes. And I don't, I don't, I don't do crazy things, but I do find myself in places that I know that many Christians wouldn't go. And we have to understand that Yahweh has put everything in place for us. It's the excel of who I am as a being that changes the frequency around me. And Yahweh is calling the people that understand. It's like this river of fire. It is designed for the homo sapien. <laughs> me and you. And it's not based on a religion. It's not for Christians only. Now I say that with the knowledge in my heart that there's no other religion. That there's no other God. There's fake gods, false gods out there that present itself to creation as God. You know, a very close, beautiful friend of mine, he was talking about this, uh, the great spirit once. And he says that he was, uh, he reached a certain point in his travels. Uh, there's one point in America where you can stand on one cross and there's four states surrounding you. Do you know what I'm talking about? I don't know where that is. What? Four corners. Four corners. Okay, well that was something. So you go to the four corners. Now he's standing on the four corners and Yahweh given him an assignment. And you, might have, you guys might have been at the conference when he shared this. And this being appeared in front of him, majestic. Like he wanted to bow down and worship it, but it was different than what he was used to because he can see. How many of you understand how important it is to see? Yes. If I can see in the natural, uh, I have to be able to see in the spirit and I have to be able to see through my soul. Otherwise there's a problem. But he's looking at this and this being majestic, beautiful, incredible. Like, wow. He says, you need to bow down and worship. And you know what my friend does? He says, God, now he says you wouldn't believe how many of my warriors how many of my men have fallen on their knees before this being thinking it was me and he said it's a demon don't worship him so don't misunderstand Yahweh needs a company of people that knows him you can't have your knowledge based on only what you read in the Bible and I oh well, what are you doing you're you're deceiving the church. Uh, no, you're deceiving the church because this is only the written. What about what about that which is spoken? What about that which is living? What about the other two dimensions of the word that completes it to give it the full value to set you free? Because if I only have one and it says, hmm, I read it and it says, the word of God will make me free. Then I confess that until I turn blue my face and die and I'm not free. Oh, the word of God was wrong. It lied. Well, no, that's just the word of God. That's which is written. There's two other aspects yeah. that enhances you and propels you. And we have to walk in it. And I'm looking, I'm going back to this river and Yahweh is constantly telling me that uh, my people are now, when this gate burst, when I was sitting there, when this gate burst open and all these beings came in, it was to be an audience for the saints in what we're about to start doing. Because let me tell you something, we are about to ignite in the, the fullness of the glory of what Yahweh has for us, the things that He has called us to. And not, not the things that we have understood in our church age, but the things that He's about to release us into as spirit beings. With the knowledge that is exceeded and taken out of our Christian faith. I want you to understand something, if I have Christian needs and I'm talking to someone that's not a Christian, I just sound like a crazy person. <laughs> Now, I don't want to be rude. I don't want to break this down, but look at any other, any movie, even cartoons. I remember watching, watching the movie Flushed Away. How many of you remember that? You know that they had a Christian crazy mouse? 
telling everybody that he's coming back and we're all gonna die. <coughs> turn or burn. That's how the world sees us as Christians. Instead of, what's the Christian saying? Because that's what we should be doing. They're the governance. They're the ones running the country. They're the ones holding up the fort. They're the ones destroying the works of the enemy. They're the ones that's propelling life back into the world. Now we are the crazy people that says we're going to marry our brother. Have mercy. Woo! That's good. Yeah. You guys okay? It's like he's calling a company of people together to understand that once we realize, now that the molecular structure of who we are is back into full play, we look different. I'm no longer a human being. I'm a spirit being. And spirit beings has no limitations. And I always do this. And I've never seen fire coming out. I see it in my spirit man. My spirit man's on fire. But there's going to be a day. And I say this with as much faith as I can have in my subconscious thought going, eh, I don't think so, dude. It just sounds so crazy. So there's still a process that we are going to go through to eliminate the old way of thinking because we are so natural. We are so earthbound. We are so human. We are so far away from truly stepping into the beauty of who we are as sons of the Most High God. But there has to be a day where fire comes out of my hands and out of my face. There has to be a day I can be able to see my scroll of my, my little uh, reels. I love those little things because I can be on fire. All right? And I'm always on fire. I just like it. Um, but there has to be a day where this becomes reality. There has to day, be a day where I accidentally miss the doorpost and walk right through the wall. Yeah. Because I'm spirit. Yes, Lord. And Yahweh is putting all these little things together in our revelation and our understanding and our knowledge and what we need to carry and who we need to be. Because there has to be a day where the sun's standing on the edge of creation and Satan is looking at all his hordes and saying to them, we're in trouble. The body is raised up. The body is about to kick us out. And the only place we have is residence under their feet. Because Satan has no kingdom. We have taken back what he has. We have slain the kings. The dragons, yes. the giants, yes. now the powers and principalities and the rules of the dark of this age, they have yeah. no set. They have no king. They have no nothing on them, nothing covering them. Which means the abilities we have to heal, to set free. That's, why do you think all of a sudden people are getting healed outside of Jesus, outside of the church wall? Uh, if you see this ad, and watch it. It looks like a church scene of a revival taking place. But all they're doing, they're not even speaking. They're just breathing their hands, blowing their breath. They have a, an understanding of it's new age. So what? A truth is a truth, no matter what you put behind it. And we have to begin to understand, well, if it's not Jesus, I don't want it. It's always Jesus. He is the center of all creation. You can't be, oh, well, that, whoops, that's not from Jesus. Well, it must have originally been from him and it was taken and perverted. Someone took a truth that could only come from him and said, well, I don't like that. In fact, I'm going to twist it a little bit. And then a son comes in and takes that same truth and says, someone twisted this thing. It's not supposed to do that. And twist it right back again because I am the light. That's where my authority comes in. See, he's calling a company of people to stand in creation and to remind themselves who we are. Because now this river of fire is a dimension of Yahweh's glory for his sons. Because I'm walking in, I have to understand something. Fire, we have... Put fire to be hell, you know, it's going to be hellfire, but fire always represents transformation and revelation. The revelation is the key because that's what Yahweh says from the beginning. If you understand the saying, uh, my people die because of the lack of knowledge. So if I die because of the lack of knowledge, then I must live because of knowledge. Right. So if there's a river going from one part of creation right through and it's for all saints and it's a river of fire. I'm in it because it's a river of revelation. So Yahweh is giving and pouring into the ecclesia, the mention of understanding and wisdom and, and, and knowledge of far and way above what we ever even thought we could have. Because if I listen to the church, and I say the church, we are the church, but if I listen to your commercial church, those who are stuck in the church, uh, age church, or the, the, age, the church age, or the kingdom age, or any previous age to where we are now, it's, it's all about Jesus. And it's a set 
bunch of rules. Now I don't mind it because it is where we have to be and it's also where we have to move out from. So I'm not trying to eliminate these places. Don't misunderstand me. Every step and every age is crucial for you to go through. So if you're not at a certain point in your walk yet, then this age is going to sound like cuckoo nuts to you. Okay, but once you reach a certain point in your walk with Yahweh, it's like, wow, that's true. Then you don't want to be part of that anymore. But before that, you just want to be part of that because it's the process of growth. There's certain things you do need. But if I listen to it, it's all about the do-do lists, all about the structure of man and how it has to be. It's only one portion of the word and there's no fullness in it. But let me remind you, if we have in the church today what we teach from the very beginning, we believe slightly different. We see some, some crazy, crazy miracles. Because if I just realize what is in my hand, other than the two splinters, it's excruciating, painful. I've eaten off my finger and it's still not out. Anyway, so, um, but I will understand what is in my hands. That frequency, my spirit overshadowing my outer body, whatever I put my hand on changes. And whatever I touch has that molecular structure placed back into it. That's why now it belongs to me. You guys okay? Yeah. I'm going to close with this. Yahweh is raising up a company of people that will be able to understand what they see. Walk in what He reveals. Understand His kingdom. Stand their ground. Knowing Him like Enoch did. Knowing Him like Yeshua said He knew His Father. As a matter of fact, I don't do anything unless I see my Father doing it. Noah had this capacity. Noah, um, Elijah, Elijah had, Enoch had this capacity to be in such covenant with God that Yahweh wanted him. I'm jealous. I'm like, no, man, I, I, I'm, I'm much more handsome. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to do, but I'm, that's that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, the company of people that, that, has, that knows God has my back. That He loves me so much, He'll take me off the face of the planet and say, hey, come live in my kingdom. You don't have to die. Yeah. Now, I don't know who you are, but that's what I want. Yes, but I don't want that as much as I want that relationship. What, what was so special about this guy? But I mean, come on. What was so special about Noah that out of all of creation at that specific point, he was chosen because he was pure, he was holy. How's that even outside of my capacity? Yahweh is calling a people that will have everything added to them that's supposed to be added to them in the full measure. I don't pray like I used to. I don't sing like I used to. I don't read the Bible like I used to. As a matter of fact, I don't do anything like I used to do it. I'm not saying that the way I did it previously was wrong, but there was only two portions missing of it. Because when I start adding the other two dimensions of Yahweh's word, it changed my understanding of prayer. It changed my understanding of worship. It changed my understanding of finance. It changed my understanding of work. It changed my understanding of everything. And of course, I live a life of repentance, so it's consistent change. I'm in a process of change right now that is, wow, hurting me. Not mentally or emotionally, physically. But that's what Yahweh says. That's where you're at. That's what I asked for. I needed something to change my financial state. And it did. He opens the, he opens the door. Now, I might look at it and think, that's not, I, want it. I don't want to do this. It's not part of who I am. I'm a, I'm a preacher. You know, this is uh, down in my, you know, it's not something I want to do. But Yahweh has taken this and He has shown me exactly where He's leading me to. It's a mindset. It's always the way you think always the way you think and his focus is to change your way of thinking you know his focus is not your sin his focus is the way you think and if he can get you to change the way you think you will find yourself outside of the places where you know you're doing things that's hurting you taking from you spiritually taking from you mentally emotionally socially whatever area of your life being taken from you in your your you missing mark i don't want to say the word sin because we've misunderstood it for so long and it's stolen from us. Because if I understand why it's missing the mark, well, am I doing something right now that's missing the mark? No. Well, the church is going to look at me and say, that is not of God. 
Well, it's not taking me away from my call. It's not taking me away from, from God in any way, fashion. As a matter of fact, it's actually putting me closer to Him. But you have made a little do-do list, and in your brain, and your thinking capacity, this is wrong. See, the Bible makes this clear. It says, if you know something's wrong, you keep doing it, that's sin. But the word sin means to miss the mark. So if I know something is missing the mark, or getting me to miss the mark, and I keep doing it, that's missing the mark. If I do it once, it's not even a problem. But I do it again, I'm just, really seriously. I hit myself with a hammer once, and then the second time I hit myself with a hammer, I need to go back to the drawing board. Get that fixed because I'm doing something wrong. Right? Our mistakes are supposed to propel us into learning. And Yahweh is calling a company of people that's set and are ready to move into what He asked for us. It's exciting. Are you guys excited? Yeah. Yeah. Father, we want to come before your throne as your people today. And we love you, my kid. You are absolutely mind-blowing. You are incredible. And we love you so much. But we have been, we've been so wrong for so long. And when I say wrong, not really wrong, but we've only had such a small portion of what you've wanted us to walk with, what you wanted us to have. And now that all these little attributes and aspects and little nuggets of wisdom and understanding and knowledge is given to us, it expands us, it opens us up, it shows us the authority and the power that we now have. It reveals to us the fullness of the mysteries that needs to be ours and we need to have it. And I ask, Father, that as we begin to grow, as we begin to mature and shift, I look at the faces of your people, Lord. We are in that fire, in that river. We are changing. We are shifting. We are beginning to believe different. We are beginning to raise up in authority. We have the lightning and the fire of Yahweh coming out of our hands and out of our faces because we've been in the mountain of the Lord. And I pray, Father, that your people will begin to see it, perceive it, receive it, and run with it. We'll open ourselves up and understand that you didn't want us to have a little box with a Jesus in it. You wanted us to have everything and be in the Jesus. Set all things back into truth. To set all things back into spirit. To put all things back into the position that it's supposed to be in. Not flesh. Not worldly. But Christ. The center of all things. The focus of my, 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 my worship. That which I step into and become. So that I can see my Father. So that I can see the fullness of the Son. So I can see Ruach HaKadosh. So I can understand what it means to worship Yahweh. To stand in the midst as, as the Shin. And enter into Him. And become Him. To be God like He is and to see the beauty of what has been created. Father, I ask that you will begin to put your sons and daughters in that position. We'll begin to realize what I touch changes. What I breathe on to change. Where I go, it shifts. It's not something physical. I do not have to see any immediate results in the natural. But what I do in the spirit as a spirit being has a higher frequency than anything I can do in the natural. And that frequency is what aligns and propels things. That brings life back into wisdom, revelation, insight. That brings life back into a lie. That brings to the, 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 the twisting back into perfect uh, harmony. That which has been taken out of alignment by the enemy. Father, I pray that we'll begin to see who we are. And that the frequency in us is what brings alignment to everything. So wherever we walk, that is what it's supposed to do. Bring the frequency back into full measure. Lord, I pray you'll be able to be blessed. I pray, Father, that you'll take everyone on a journey to, today into a deeper place, a higher place. Bless your people. And we want to thank you and praise you. You are incredible.